Good morning gamers! A lot of you wanted me to explain how I make my V-Road models and I'm gonna show you. This is Mira. Mira is my pride, my joy. Mira has the most toggles out of every V-Road model I've ever made. Um, I say V-Road but then today we're gonna be using V-Road Unity and Blender. But most of it is in V-Road. The only thing that's not in V-Road is me adding toggles like Mira's ears moving, like her tail moving, her wings moving. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot her keybind is for the tail. Her being bald and having cool things like this, cool accessories that you can toggle on and off. And also her collar, because you can't do that in Vroid. To display the avatar like I am now, we'll be using a free program called VC Face, which I will link the download to in the description. And today I'm gonna be making a whole new model for this. And this is said model. She's very cute. She's got a cool jacket toggle and she's got moving earrings. And also she's got cool glasses. I call them MLG glasses just because, you know, back in the day. I will be doing a giveaway on Twitter for this model that will probably start as soon as I post this video. So go follow my Twitter to look at that if you're interested. So let me explain to you how I start this process. So usually I have an idea in mind, like for the model that I'm about to make, I had the idea that I wanted her to be a strawberry cow and I wanted her to be like pink and cream colored. Like I wanted the theme to be strawberries and cream, so that was what I was going for. But then I had no clue on what to do for the outfit, I just knew that that was roughly what I wanted. So to get inspo, I use Pinterest, and Pinterest is free, most people have Pinterest if you do art. But if you don't, you can always make an account, and just basically search for what you want. So what I searched for was like pink aesthetics, because usually what comes up is like pink and white, and that's basically what I'm going for. So I just made a storyboard, I called it Strawby, and it was just a bunch of stuff that I thought would maybe look good. Like, I didn't have any final idea on it, I just knew that this was roughly what I wanted. So I kept putting stuff in, like, not everything has to suit your colour theme either, and if you don't have a colour scheme, then that's fine, you can come up with it. So, like, you can see some of the stuff in my mood board is, like, brown, or, like, blue, or just, like, pastel theme. It's alright if your ideas change, or you have other inspo when looking on Pinterest, because as long as you're certain and you're happy with it, it's all fine. So the next thing you want to do is make a sketch. You can use anything you want. I use Clip Studio because I have Clip Studio for art, but Clip Studio is a paid service, like £20. You might have paint for Sai. You could use literal paint, it's fine. You could use a paper and pencil. It's, we don't have to do a sketch, this isn't like a necessary step. It's just easier for you to then model in Vroid because you have an idea of what you want to do. Your sketches don't have to be good either. Like if you look at this sketch and then look at the f final model, you can tell the difference. I'll show you a few examples because I have a few models, but like my sketches are never good. They don't have to be good. And also during this process, I usually come up with the colour scheme I want as well, because I like for all my models to have a set colour scheme and for all the colours to flow pretty well. Um, I know there is a website that can auto-generate like colour palettes for you, so I'll link that in the description as well. Like this is me doing the sketch. You can tell that I like mess around with it a lot. Like I'm I start drawing something and then I get unhappy and then I change the outfit again. I change the hair a bunch, change the colours a bunch. Like I can't, It's okay to like struggle with the sketch because the sketch for me is the most important part and modelling is probably the, the best part. So after you've done the sketch and you're completely happy with it, what I think you should also do is make a list of things that you want it to have. So for this model I wanted it to have like a bell choker which I can't add in Vroid. I wanted it to have earrings. I wanted it to have, I wanted it to have a transparent skirt. Like it has a slip dress and then a transparent skirt on top of it. And I also wanted her jacket to be a toggle. And I wanted her ears to move when she blinked as well, which you'll have to do in Blender. To make things easier with making the list, here's a list of what you can do in Vroid, what you can do in Blender and what you can do in Unity. So just so you know what programs you need to use and what parts you, might not. So for the next step we're going to be using Vroid and all this all this content is from my stream and you might notice that Mira looks a bit different because it was the like half finished version of Mira. This is the full full version of Mira that you're seeing right now. Um, the skirt on Mira right now I actually learned how to do that while I was making the new model. So you do learn stuff as you go along like no matter what so just experiment with things. <laughs> And as I go along, I may not explain things in depth enough, so I'm going to link tutorials that may help you with each thing. And if you need help as well, comment, and maybe I'll be able to reply to you and help you out. If not, I can just point you in the direction of help. There's a few more things I'll be using for this process. One of them is Clip Studio Paint. 
because when you get into Vroid, you can edit all the textures and you can either draw it on Vroid itself or you can export it and edit it in Clip Studio. And I prefer doing it in Clip Studio because there's a lot more blending tools, but you can just do all of it in Vroid. Clip Studio is not necessary, but I do use it. We're also going to be using a website called Booth PM. You do need an account for this, but you don't need to spend any money. All my models that I've made so far, I have not paid any money at all, but it's just for getting stuff like the collar, the hat, and like all the toggles like that. All the accessories that you'd want to add that you can't add in Vroid, like refer back to the list of things that you can do in Vroid and can't do in other things. But like some things are interchangeable, like the piercings on Mirror right now are a Unity asset, but Mirror's original piercings I did in Vroid. You can do some things, but are some things just look better if you just take it from the internet instead of doing it yourself? Because, uh, I'm alright at making models, but I'm not that good. Alright, the first thing I need to do is get rid of the shading. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do with this model is play around with fucking proportions. So. Oh, don't want, I don't want to be massive. Hmm. I kind of want something to do with the. Yeah. Waist width? Yeah, I could probably make that bigger. Well, I don't know what is on mirror. I think it's like 1.5 on mirror. That's too big. She got hips. She got big hips. Big birth hips. Real. So. Um. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm going to do this the hard way. Actually, it's not the hard way. It's the easier way. Uh, skin. Skin guide. This is where the fun begins. Basically, I actually do all of it in Vroid, uh, in Clip Studio, and then I import it into Vroid. So, and then, so first of all, I don't want the skin to be this color. So, skin's getting destroyed. Goodbye, skin. New skin color just dropped. Hey, so first voiceover. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a darker shade of the skin tone and just adding in some shadows. Oh yeah, if you use Vroid, these lines are very, very important because like this bit here is the collarbone and I only want the shadow to go up to the collarbone. Like this is the center of the boob. This is like the under bit of it. Like you can tell where everything is. Like uh, this is the arm, but like here is the elbow. But here's the inner arm and here's the elbow. You just need to understand the guides and honestly everything makes sense. Oh, another thing I like to do is because I'm fucking lazy as hell. I don't like having to do things twice so i use a ruler tool and like put a ruler in the center of it so it just sim you know does everything symmetrically if you're doing this in vroid there is a built-in symmetry tool on the top right of where you're drawing if you just toggle that on then it will automatically put a ruler in the center and it will symmetry I might have to adjust this. The best way to check if you're doing it right is to just import it into um, Vroid and check that it lines up. But if you're doing it in Vroid, then you won't need to export it to check because you'll just be able to see what it looks like as you go. And here I'm just adding some more shadows and adding some covers to the nipples because I don't add not safe for work. But you always could if you wanted to. Like you can see where I've imported it into Vroid again that I realise that the shadows are way too far down and that I need to erase some of it. So now I'm just moving on to the face and doing the exact same thing that I did for the body. Again, I will be editing the face texture when I get to doing like the hair because then i'll add shadows with the hair and stuff so a lot of it i'll add later a lot of the shadows add later but like this is just to start so now what i'm doing is playing around with the rest of the face features as you can see on the left i'm playing around with all the presets and all the options you can also edit all of these textures so i edited the eyeliner because the eyeliner didn't match what i wanted to go for so i just exported it into clip studio and edited it there but you can always do it in vroid again 
I didn't make Mira's eyes. See, these are from a thing called a booth, which I'm going to show you right now. Booth, you can get a lot of things for free. Like, if you want eyes, you can just search for it, and then you can set the filter to free. Like, if you go to filter and set it to zero. Loads of eye presets. So one of mine, I think mine's called, like, the mochi. I'll be able to find it. But Mira's eyes is the only texture that I didn't make myself. So I really struggle with making eyes. So I use the presets. Yeah, look, I'm going to install that and I'm going to use it. Yeah, let me show you the iris. Like, they're the ones I just got. They're not the color I want, but I'm going to edit the color. Like, you can just... Um... This. Like, this is more of a color, color theme I want. I want it to be more saturated. And that's what I'm saving it as. Huzzah! She has eyes! Crazy! Like, looking at the sketch, the way I want this dress to be is I want the skirt to be kind of like transparent like you know how like um they have like a slip dress underneath and then they have transparent fluffy skirt that's what i want for this so i'm gonna add like a slip dress underneath and then the cardigan and the skirt and like the this dress will be a different part like i'll show you how i'll do it so i'm gonna add the slip dress first which i'm gonna do using the same skin thing but i'm gonna save wait i'm gonna save this as a clip so i can edit it later and then I'm going to save it again as the dress. Because I don't need any of this. I just want the dress. And I want the dress to be this colour. So. Let's begin. Let us begin. Like I want the dress to start about here. I'm going to put it up there. And I want it to start on the chest here. So this is me making the dress, as I said, I wanted two parts. So this is me making the slip dress, which is attached to the body skin. And then after I finish that, I go to the outfit bit and create a dress texture and start creating the dress and putting it on my model. I start by like carving out the preset into the shape that I want and then export it and then add the color and the details and stuff. And then we import it back in. And then a bit into this, I discover that you can actually add separate layers so I can have more than one dress texture on top of the other just to create a more 3d effect so that's what i'm doing what is going to be the base layer is uh this this is the base layer this is an experiment i'm just cutting each section of the dress into each respective layer and then importing it into vroid this is base layer base layer one All right uh, dresses, this is the dress, import, base 2, oh my god wait this works, uh, dress, wrap dress, wait but I kind of don't want just the frills. I want it to like clearly have layers, so I'm gonna um, change the base layers again. Right, now I just need to edit them. Right, so skirt volume. Poofia. Oh my god, wait! That's so cool. Poofia. Now I'm just messing around with each layer, so each layer is the right length and volume. Right now for the body, I need to edit the body again because I need her to have shadows. I'm gonna want these fishnets and make them white. Don't do what I do, well do do what I do, because this is a good way to do things. Feel free to change the colour of these textures, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Hee hee hee. So I downloaded that fishnet texture from booth and now i'm going to put it into clip studio recolor it white and also add on the socks what are her shoes i don't actually know what i put for her shoes shoes she doesn't have any rose shoeless i'm gonna put shoes on her anyway oh 
Oh, they're cute shoes. Oh, look at how cute these are. Oh, they're so cute. She can have these. But she's got a choker, doesn't she? She's got a bell. Right, I have I have a few ideas for the bell. Because I basically, I got a cowbell from the uh, booth. But I don't know how I'm going to do it. Because I don't... I want... Uh... I might have to pay to get one. Because this one's the only one I've got. And I don't know how that's going to go. Because if is it an FBX? Yeah, it's an FBX. But the thing is, I don't want the rope. So... I'm not quite sure. I'm going to do the cardigan as well. Forgot about that. I do need to do that. It's going to be a knit hoodie, pretty much. So I started by carving out the shape of it into a V-Roid. And then exporting that, putting it into Clip Studio. So I could add the pattern and colour on top. But I don't do the colour just yet. I take a break and start doing the hair and somehow get distracted by the ears. The hair is the most confusing part. Makes me want to dead, like, all the time. Oh, I'm gonna do her ears before I do the hair, actually. Because the hair- the ears are really f cool. Like, someone came up with how to do the ears. So you get cat ears, and then, um... I want them... Like, I want them to be on the side. I can put them down the side, I think. I can change it in pose mode, guys. Okay, let's let's go into Blender, guys, so I can test if this works. All right, ladies, I want to do some Blender. A off. Uh, somewhere. Strawberry cow. There you go. This is what it looks like. It's gorgeous. Let me put her textures on so you can actually freaking see her. Like I can like literally just make it so her ears are like down. What is that bone? What are you? Oh, you're what I want. Okay. Yeah, so I want the ear to do this. And then also be like that. There you go. So I can do it. I can do it in um, in freaking blender. I'm going to move it out a little bit. I'm going to do the front of the hair first. Because it's going to be the hardest part, I think. The so Vroid hair is very, very annoying. Because you've got to use... This stuff is basically where the hair can go. Like, if you add the mirror tool, then it will move together but like i don't want this to move together because i don't want any of the hair to be in the back like i just want the hair to come out in the front like it can come out like this far i don't want to come out by the nose like that this is the front of the hair so her hair kind of goes like this mm, not really And I don't want it to be thick, like, at all, so I'm gonna reduce the thickness. I want the hair to be, like, papery. You'll understand that thickness is a huge, like, B word in a second. But I'm gonna not do that. I'm gonna edit the texture, because I want the texture to be, um, this, this colour. So I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna export this. Hair. The main hair colour is going to be... And it's set overlay. This, this is the main hair colour. Here you go! So I'm just adding in some more hair. I split the front of the hair into two sections, so two different layers, so the top part of the hair would be in front of the bottom part, and then I do the back all in one layer. Don't be afraid to keep adjusting it until it looks right, because the hair can really make or break a model, I think. I kind of want a horn sticker like that, so... I need the base to be straight. 
be as thick as possible basically just the thickness that i want up i kind of want it up to like that's huge what the fuck that's so big ah! don't think that big bro. oh that's a big horn what the frick oh actually i know it's always like that's because it's the shape that it is yeah and you should be a triangle triangle horns she's cute however her horns are gonna be a different thing the horns are pink i think that this pink horns how cute so then I decided that I was unhappy with the iris, so I went back into the face and messed with the preset iris textures. And then also another thing you can edit is the hair bounce. So it's like what sections of your hair you want to bounce and how much they want. So if you go into hair bounce, you can separate them into diff different groups and change the stiffness and stuff. So you can see how I did mine here. You can also edit the stiffness later in Unity. I'm adding the cow print to this jumper. Already. I'm looking to see if there's a cow print thing because I don't want to do it. Cow print! It's 10. <laughs> cow print. I want it for free. Oh, free cow print. That's a nice cow pat. Right, I'm going to use this cow pattern. So what I did is I got a free cow pattern from Clip Studio Assets, but you can honestly Google like cow print clip art and then import that and layer it on. Or you can just freehand it, whatever you want to do. But then I add the pattern on and then I add some details as well as some shading to the jumper. And then I go back in and add some shading to the dress. Midway, I add the cat ears as well, and then I export the texture and mess with that texture as well, adding the cow print. Now I'm adding the finishing shadows to the face texture. I'm also adding some highlights to the hair texture just to make the hair pop more. This is just my style. I added some eyeshadow, edited her lips, Add, added some colour to the bottom of her palms, added some rings and accessories. This is honestly just me touching up and adding like the final details and stuff that I thought was missing. Oh yeah, see if you don't want to do like skin colours and stuff, there are like, there are skin colour bases that people have available. Like, it's fine. Yeah, you can use it for your VTuber VR chat, beat save models, but you don't sell it and you can credit if you can. There you go. But, like, I did the skin colour myself. Then I'm just adding the nail texture and then bam, she's all good for Blender. So now I have to export her in preparation for both Blender and Unity. So, delete transparent meshes. Why? Because otherwise it won't let you do your blend shapes. If you're using Hannah tool, it won't let you do your blend shapes unless you delete transparent meshes. I think it's because it just, like it counts the amount of meshes when it makes the blend shape and there's too many. So delete the ones that you don't need. And then just to make it easier to deal with the hair, like if you have like a tail made of hair or wings made of hair, you don't want it to combine the hair mesh because then you can't edit them separately. So untick that and it makes everything easier, I promise. Like for example, with Mira, if I combined all the hair mesh, her tail, her wings, and her hair would all be one. And then I wouldn't be able to add, like, the flappy thing that I've got or the tail wag. Like, you can recombine them. So, like, the tail's one thing, the wings are one thing. Because Mira's wings have a load of different hairs, but you can combine them in Blender. Which I can show you for this model, but it's, like, not... This is not the best example for it. So Blender, the only thing you really need for Blender, so like you just make a general one, delete the cube, camera, light. What you need is um, like a VRM import thing. So I might link that when I make the YouTube video on how to do that. Just so you can import your model into this. So use like the middle, the scroll wheel to um, move your model around. And then if you shift and scroll wheel, you'll be able to like, and the camera and stuff your model will look like this which is like this is not what she looks like is it this is how you change it like the stuff on the top 
that you render her textures in and she looks like this she looks like a normal human being she was kind of freaky because the shaders aren't right but um she will look fine she will look fine when i put her back oh yeah i can show you what i mean about combining the hairs like if you select the hairs in the armature bit select some hairs and then press ctrl j it combines them into one thing but like i don't want them combined into one thing so i'm gonna backspace up i want them to separate her still but i'm gonna move her ears as they are because i don't want them to be like this i want them to be cow ears because she's a cow and this is not the ear i want what i want is this really tiny bone at the back really really tiny so i'm gonna have to move her ear like that but then also you can notice that her things are sticking out and you really do not want her ears sticking out of her head so you can just use like the normal pose and like just push it into her scalp there you go her ears are normal now another thing i want for toggles i don't know what i want for toggles i might make it so her her ears move slightly when she talks like when she blinks like you know how mirrors here mirrors ears move when she blinks or like when i do this i want to do that i might make that happen for her as well as i'm learning things with tutorials don't be afraid to keep using tutorials because exactly what i'm doing so i'm using a tutorial because her ears won't stay in place when i put her in vc face <gasps> it worked holy f her ears are in the right place this is amazing okay she's not got blend shape so her tracking's really poo but like omg guys it worked the posing thing worked there you go i learned something new for this shape keys so this this particular um waffles oka waffles in my server taught me my daughter waffles taught me how to do this waffles has a tutorial on a youtube on a youtube i'm gonna link it in the description when i make this because this is how i learned how to do this so you make basis key then you go into pose mode again click on the bone go into pose mode so i want her ears to hmm like when she blinks what i want them to do do I want them to move downwards or upwards? I could make them do like that. But I don't want that to do that. I want like the tip of her ears. I know there's another bone in you. I mean, there you go, there you go. There's the bone. It's hiding from me. This is what it looks like. Oh yeah. See, I make it so her ears flop when she blinks. So, and then you want to go to armature again. Apply its shape key. Add modifier, armature, and select the bones. Oh no, you don't. I can't select the bone. Where the fuck is the bone? It's like in the back of my head. There you go. Select the bones, and then go back into pose mode, and reset it. Um. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. There you go. Perfect. Give her the bones back. She has her bones. They're there. Her bones are perfectly intact, guys. Don't worry about it. Right, so that's the only thing that I want to change with her bones. So, yeah. That's the only thing I want with her bones. So her bones are fine. So she's done in Blender. That's the only thing I wanted. That's the only blend shape that I want from her. So export as VRM. Blender finish. Right, ladies. Now we're going to go into Unity. Here is where the fun begins. Or rather they're not fun because I need to make sure she's imported properly as well. Right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna import her. This is where the actual fun begins. Strawberry cow. Uh what was it? Blender finish. There you go. It'll save the prefab. Go on, Gully. Get in the scene. Right. Here she is in all her glory. So the first thing I'm gonna do is her blend shape so I can add the keys. Because that's all I really want to do. So, um, if you have Hannah tool, uh, you can you have to buy it, I think. So I'll link where you can buy it in the in the YouTube tutorial. So you need to buy this. Is I believe it's like ten dollars something. I might be wrong. I might be really wrong. You need to buy this. This is the easiest way to do blend shapes. There, the only other ways are really hard. So what I need to do is read her first. So she's a perfect synthioid female. And I think you need to put her face in there, so it needs to read them straight off her face. So it will read her blend shapes that already exist. And then she, it needs to create the better ones, like the AR kit one. So it's Clip Builder. I need it to be her whole thing. Perfect Sync, New Vioroid, Clip Build. And then I like tweak them a little bit. Like you can tweak all of them here and you can make new ones if you want. 
So, like, I think her brows are what I'm going to have to fix. Like, brow down left. See, the, like, the eyebrow, I can pop it out. Like, it goes into her eye. And we don't want that. We don't want it to go into her eye. So, what we're going to do is go into the face. And then literally just change it to, like, 75. So it doesn't go into her face. It goes pretty close to into her face. But it's not into her face. So it's fine. 75. So that's that. That's what I wanted to edit the most. And then I'm going to create a new blend shape. No, I'm not. I'm not creating a new blend shape because I want to change the blink. So when her eye blinks, I want her ears to move, remember? That's not going to be in her face. It's, it's going to be in her body. The new blend shape I made. Look, her ears move. You can, you can toggle it just like this. So every time she blinks, whether it be the left or the right, her ears are going to move. And then I'm also going to make it so her eyes wider. No, I'm not. I'm gonna do when, I, when she squints her eyes as well that's gonna happen that's gonna happen another thing with the squint is that her squint doesn't squint properly so i also want her eyes to like be properly closed when she squints so there's gonna be a bend shape called eye close somewhere if i can read it might be up here yeah i look like it might be yes blink so i blink so that's gonna be like properly closed that's what i want There you go. Now her eyes are properly closed. So now that's all that I wanted to add to her. What you can do is, like, if you have stuff that you want to toggle something else, like mirror's wings, I want them bound to her back. Or mirror's tail, I want them bound to her hips. You can do that if you go into the prefab. And then you want something called the bone transfer tool, which I will link the tutorial to below as well. And that's how you do that. But now for her, I want to add some more custom expressions. I want to add that her her dress is transparent. So you can add that her dress is transparent here. So I made it difficult for myself because each of her things have completely different separate layers. So I'm going to need to show an explorer. If I drag it in and I want it to be transparent. I'm going to say like 70% 70, 70 transparent. No, not 70. 70 is a bit much. Maybe 80. 80. And I'm just going to save it. Just override it. And I'm going to do that for each of her layers. If I set that to transparent, I think it might work. Yeah, there you go. If I set it to transparent, there it all shows. You can see that it's like properly transparent now. So now she's got transparent textures. And I'm also going to make it so her jacket is toggle. So I don't want her jacket to show at all. So I need to... So each object, like each thing on a model has a material and a texture so i want her material to just not exist so this is if i just turn this slider down to zero she's not there that's the transparency but now if i go into blend shapes and this is all her blend shapes and if i just make a new one and i'm gonna call it jacket and i go to material list i select the texture i don't remember what it's called i'm guessing it's tops actually no which top is it materials what are you called no that's your eyelashes tops one cloth so blend shapes jacket Blah. tops one cloth that one and then i want to set it to color and up put that up oh if that's not the right one might be uh This one? Yes, this one. There you go. Oh, you want to set the colour to white as well, otherwise it will just be black. Don't forget to do that. There you go, that's a toggle. And then anything else that I want, I'm going to have to add now. So, I was going to add an ice cream toggle. Like, you can go on Booth PM again and find if there's any, like, 3D objects you want to add. Oh, I want to add some earrings to her. So, if I go, um, FBX earrings. There are some really pretty, like, cheap earrings cheap i say cheap they're free free earrings that i can put on her i want to add some dangly ones because i know there's some really pretty dangly ones on here there's there's loads just have a look i'm gonna use these is it an fbx yeah fbx you make sure it says that it's an fbx before you install it so let me go to strawberry cow put it in there and extract it in here unity package so to import unity package go into assets right click import package custom package Find where you put your package. So I put mine in strawberry cuts right here. 
and then just click import on all of it. And there should be a folder somewhere, like this is the folder for it, I believe. Earrings, here are the earrings. The materials aren't there. I'm gonna change the I'm gonna change the shader to the Vroid one. And I'm gonna make it gold myself. That's not gold. This is gold. Or maybe I'm gonna make it rose gold actually. That'd be really cute. Like really cute. Oh my god, rose gold. Like that. That's really cute. Okay. Gem. Gem crystal. I can't really help with that. So. Crystal, I'm guessing I'm just going to make it like a light pink. And if you're going to place them, to place them into the avatar, you have to go into the prefab. Prefab is where you add everything. I'm going to find her ear. Like there's a whole load of big, there's a whole list of big things. And they all correspond to a different bone in her body. Um, so like if I read it properly, like that's her neck. So I want to add a choker to her, which I do. I want to add a cowbell to her. I need to add it here. So her ears are going to be called cat ears. Yes, her ears. So I'm going to want to put the earring into her ear. Look, that's a pretty earring. That's going in her ear. There you go. Now I can add her earrings without issues because I'm not stop being a stinky. Oh yeah, and also bone names. Um, bone names. Remember to rename them, otherwise it will not let you export. So that when it saves, otherwise you'll get an error being like, oh, some of your things have the same name. Doing this is hard because you can't zoom in a whole lot. Move that forward. It's actually in her ear. That's cute. That's actually very, very cute. Like, so cute. Let me um, change your textures really quickly so it actually has, like, the right ones. I'll do that. And that's basically what it is. Oh, this needs to be a lot more forward, I think. They're not completely aligned. Honestly, just ignore it. Ignore that they're not completely aligned because it's just like a... It's just a test model. Maybe that's just because of where I put it. Who knows? What? And clicking the wrong thing is also very annoying. It's probably the worst experience. There you go, now she's got earrings. Wonderful! This is an amazing day. So we're using this cowbell because this is the only cowbell that there is. And, uh, I don't have choice. Package. Custom package. How about Unity package? There you go. So it's got all its textures as well. For the choker, I want to be this pink. That's what I want. Basically, this cowbell was a whole mess. So what I ended up doing was taking the rope and the bell and making the choker that it comes with invisible. And then importing a separate choker. And then making it look like so they attach. And they're both in the neck bone so it just looks like they're together so then i could angle the rope and the bell properly so it actually looks like it attaches because before if i just did it with the built-in choker and bell i couldn't put the bell at an angle because the choker would be at an angle and it was all just a bit of a mess so basically just mess around put her into uh like export her because i just want to see what she looks like right now drm export humanoid Find duplicate bone names. There you go, see? There's duplicate bone names fucking somewhere and I've got to find it. This is quite possibly the most painful thing, so make sure your bones all have separate names. This is just a test for now. Yeah. Mero's birthday is Look! September 31st. She's great! Of August. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit the transparency. I think the transparency is a bit too transparent. But oh my god, guys, look. Jack, oh there. She's so cute! Wait, I love her! Wait, that's, that's gonna be really a hair stuff. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add the MLG glasses to her head. There you go. Face. Her head's her face. It's all the same. Dead. Oh. Yep. Oh, wow, look at those. Wow. You're putting them on her? Yes. Why are they so big? Because scaling. Now I'm going to make these freaking disappear. You need to be Vroid. So I can tell you to feck off. And also you should be transparent. No glasses for her. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blend shape for them. 
Add blend shape clip. This is gonna be called MLB glasses, because that's what they are to me. Add uh it's matte, isn't it? Why is texture not here? Right, that's fine. I'm gonna try that. Wow. <laughs> what the f- Oh yeah, I need that to be white. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Pretty much. Alright. Let's export this MLG glasses. I'm gonna make that... Oh, They're in her eyes. <laughs> They're in her eyes, guys. Bruh. Um, no eyeballs, I guess? Let me close that and reset it. Ah, I did it! She's finished. There you have it, I made a whole model. This is the model, and I'm gonna do a little showcase and show you everything on it. I just wanted to mention that to use this type of face tracking, you will need an iPhone or a phone that has like face ID and you will need an app called iFacial MoCap, which I believe is $8 on the app store for Apple users. And I will link a tutorial on how to set up iFacial MoCap. If you don't have an iPhone or a phone with face tracking, this is what your tracking will look like if you're just using a webcam. This is me just using my webcam. She's still cute. We love her. Um, her ears don't wiggle, but I can make it so that they do. It's just, um, I was only accounting for the iPhone tracking, but I can edit that so the final model, her ears will still move when she blinks. That's the model. Um, the giveaway for this model will be going live on Twitter as soon as you see this, so check out my Twitter for more details. If you can see on the model, the bell is wiggly, and so are my ears. And also, and my hat's wiggly too, and I figured out how to do that. So as I mentioned earlier, you can edit um, the stiffness on bones and you can also add wiggly things to bones that don't have any movement. Uh, don't take that out of context. So I'll make a tutorial on how to do that. I'm sure there's one out there already, but um, want to listen to me. Obviously. If you still feel like this is too much effort, just remember that I take commissions. You can pay me to do it for you. See you in the next tutorial, I guess. Bye.